Right, in a recent video, I set out to discover what the Guggenbaits crack and craw would deliver in the Louisiana marsh, but I quickly got on another pattern catching speckled trout and bass on SP57 crankbaits. Really phenomenal action. So I didn't give this thing a fair chance, but today I'm gonna do just that. All right, I'm fishing this thing rigged on a quarter ounce death grip jig head. If I get in an area that's super grassy, I'll switch to a Texas rig. Last time I fished it, that was the issue, but what I was fishing was snot grass, that kind of funky algae stuff, and nothing really comes through that well. I like having that exposed hook whenever possible, just to get better hook sets. Got a hard west wind today, blowing this way, probably not crazy hard, it's probably about 12 knots or so, and we got a falling tide right toward the end of the fall, and you know that west wind's gonna help it fall longer, and that certainly doesn't hurt my feelings. You can see all this exposed bank. It doesn't have a whole lot farther to go. This bayou drains a pond in the back. It's got about eight feet of depth in the bends. Great place for fish to stack up on this low tide. <laughs> Did you see that? A bass just literally erupted right on the bank. Got a trinasse here with some dirty water coming out of it. Water on the other side of it doesn't look too bad. Why it's so dirty coming out of that little pond. Man, that's bad. Not bad at all in the main bayou here. Ooh, there's a fish. Man, that didn't take long. Ooh, good bass, really good bass. Goodness. Oof, he smoked it. All right, you wanted that crack and crawl, didn't you? All right. Pretty bass, really pretty bass. He tagged it. That's a good sign. Ooh, there's another one. Goodness, he smacked it. Oh, another gorilla bass. Another big old bass. Oh. Sorry, dude, you can be super dizzy. Well, he's not as big as I thought, but good sized marsh bass. Hooked well on the cracking craw. So far, I'm impressed. Just like the previous one, man, that fish tagged it. Hit it angry. Oh, goodness, you see that? <laughs> I'm sure he's long gone by now, but gotta make a cast there. Ooh, there he is. He was not long gone. <laughs> oh, another, another nice bass. Yeah, no, sorry, dude. Oh, good fish. Oh, look at that. <laughs> you lucky, boy. You are lucky. Not many anglers in this part of the world will let you go. All right, destroyed the bait. So what I'm finding with these things, they're super soft. Don't get many fish off of each bait. Now, I know most anglers don't care about that as long as they're getting a lot of bites. I mean, you'd rather a bait you have to replace a lot than a bait that's not getting bites. It's super hard to rig because the bait is really slimy. And you know, these death grips, you gotta kind of push, push the bait up so it holds. That'll do it. That was cool. That fish pushed something up on the surface right there, right up against the bank, but he obviously didn't go far. He was super aggressive. So far, the hits I've gotten in this thing are absolutely ferocious. It's not, uh, not subtle. I don't have to wonder whether I got bit or not. I don't have to look for my line to move or anything like that. They are tagging it. Good sign. These baits, they smell really, really good. I don't know if they smell good to fish, but they smell good to people. Man, look at the ducks, a million ducks. Ooh. There he is. <laughs> he tagged it, but I thought he spit it. 
but obviously he did not. Oh, red eye bass. Hooked well, too. Thanks for the fight, dude. Crack and craw. Fish love it. The other day, I actually caught at least one speckled trout on it. Definitely looks like a bait that flounder would destroy. I haven't bumped into many flounder lately. Caught a bunch this fall. None in a few weeks. Bunch of glass minnows in here. Really good sign. This is that pond I was telling you about. Look at all the exposed bank. Tell how low this water is. Really crazy low. West wind dumps water out of the South Louisiana marsh. At least in most areas. Ooh, there he is. Oh goodness, look at that. Look at that, a big catfish. A big blue cat. <laughs> he tagged it. Let me spot lock. These things, I tell you what, there's a ton of them in the Louisiana marsh right now. They're hard to get to hit artificials. But this bait is scented, so that may have helped me there. Come on, swim back into this net. All right, we got him. We got him. All right. Man, I don't know if this guy is gonna fit in my cooler. I got this kind of small ice chest. I wasn't planning on keeping many fish today, but I love these things. They are so good to eat. I'd really like to keep him. I'm gonna try and cram him in there. Let's see if that'll work. Actually, I may just put him in my live well because he's not gonna fit in here. There's no chance. On the crack and craw. He liked it. Ooh. Big, beautiful blue cat. Look at this guy. Whoa, hold on. Let's get you in the live well, buddy. All right, getting him some water. Let me check on him. There we go. There we go, you're gonna be fine. You got some water coming. All right, I got this removable divider. I'm gonna take this out so the fish has a little bit of room. Get out that corner. There you go. You know, those catfish, they're not really a glamour species. Nobody comes to South Louisiana to catch catfish, by and large. But man, they're fun. I really, I really like them. They're a great bycatch. They hit super hard, like that one did. You don't often catch many on artificials, as I mentioned. You see them all the time when you're sight fishing redfish. They're all over the place. And almost never can you get them to bite when you see them. That one, obviously, I did not see. Just a blind cast. No complaints. Ooh, can you see those gar? I know they'd like to be in that pond, but not much water in there. Wish they were redfish. Ooh, ooh, look at that. <laughs> He smoked it. Not a big fish, but he wanted the cracking craw. Good Lord, he was hooked well. Right at this little drain, I made a little bit of a move and water's gorgeous in here. Absolutely gorgeous. There he is. That fish. Smoked it and ran right at me. All right. That was awesome. That fish knocked slack in the line. Oh, goodness. Hooked very well. I had a reel to catch up with him. There's a fish. All right, I got a bad hook set. He hit it on the initial fall. I engaged and he was on there. Never felt him hit. Another bass. All right, better fish. So much fun, man. I just love catching these things. Definitely pretty impressed with the crack and craw. They love it. Yes. 
Same thing, man. He smacked it and ran right at me. All right. It's time to call this a trip. Absolutely fantastic action today. I tried to fish this crack and crawl in my last video, but I came across a different pattern that was super hot throwing that SP57. So I went with that. In this video, I've given it a much better try, and I've got to say, mostly I'm pretty impressed. I'll start with the negative. Very, very soft bait. Tend to lose claws when you get hits and miss the fish. Also, maybe you get one or two, at most three fish per bait and then it just tears, tears down here. I'm sure I didn't try a Texas rig, but I'm sure it'd be the same problem tearing at the nose. So that's the bad points. But on a positive note, it really produced well. Caught a whole bunch of fish on it. You know, it is a smaller bait, as I mentioned, it's only three inches. So this time of year, you definitely want to throw smaller baits. Everything in the marsh is a lot smaller. And when the fish hit it, I mean, they really tattooed it. Most of the hits were super strong, really, really powerful. I'd say with this bait more than usual, I felt the hits. You know, a lot of times when you're out here fishing, you know, you engage your reel or something and the fish is on, or you hop it, the bait settles, you never feel it hit, maybe see your line moving, whatever. I felt a lot of hits today. So that's definitely a positive. It could be because of the scent. Obviously, that scent played a role in me catching that catfish. I mean, I've caught catfish before in unscented baits, but it's really rare. So I've got to give credit to this today. I'm sure I'm not going to throw it every time, but it's definitely something I'm going to bring along with me, and I'll fish it again in the future for sure. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with someone you think would also like it. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I'd appreciate it if you do. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh, we'll see you right here on Marsh Man Mass on.